Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's uh, project is uh, on this uh, Craftsman uh, push mower and uh, the problem we're having with it is that uh, the self-propel doesn't work. So let's see if we can't uh, troubleshoot it and uh, fix it up. Alright guys, so we're up on the lift here now. Um, as far as these uh, self-propel systems, uh, I can think of a couple of different reasons why they might not be working. This one, uh, when I mean you pull the handle here, up top, and you've got a cable, right? That cable comes down, right, and it goes into the transmission here, underneath this cover. There's a 516s. So, um, right off the bat, I mean, if this thing is stored outside, these cables, a lot of time inside the sheathing, and you can kind of hear it based on what I, uh, saw from the, from the carburetor and the fuel tank, I'm pretty sure this thing lives outside. And a lot of times moisture gets up and in this cable, feeds down through the sheathing, and then you get the cable start rusting and, and it seizes up. And it seizes up or breaks when you try to pull it. I mean, this thing is locked. It is locked up. That thing is not moving at all. So it could be the cable. And uh, it could also be the uh, transmission as well underneath here. So I'm going to take this cover off here. See if there's anything out of the ordinary first. And uh, we're going to go from there. All right. So this is what your transmission looks like here. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this um, cable off and uh, I'm going to see if it actually moves. So I'm just gonna take it off from here, off the handlebar. Just get yourself a flathead screwdriver and you could just, uh, Try it usually from the top. There's a bit of an opening there. Okay, and then that will usually be able to allow you to release it from the handle up top on the Z-Bend. And now I'm gonna be able to see if that cable is seized up in there, rusted in there. I'm hoping that's what it is, because yeah, I can't really pull it at all. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, remove it, the cable from the uh, the arm here where it attaches, and then disconnect it from this arm as well, and see if we can't. figure out if this thing is all seized up. I mean, it's all rusty here, so. All right, guys, I didn't realize my camera was off there, but let me show you what I did. Uh, I took out this 9 uh, nut, all right? And uh, what I did there, when you take that off, then this top part of the pulley actually comes off, then you can slide the belt off. The reason why I did that is I wanna see if I turn this uh, pulley, when I engage, you got to engage the drive system here. When I turn this, then the wheels should move, okay, with it engaged. So, there you go. You can see the, the wheels are propelling. So, there's nothing wrong in the transmission part of it, okay. The belt itself work, seems good. So I'm, um, again, coming right back to the theory that this is going to be a cable change, all right? So to get this cable off, you kind of have to go down in here, and you're not going to be able to see it. I don't even know if I can get a flashlight on that. But the end of that cable 
is right there. There's two tabs. It's like any other sort of lawnmower cable. Let me see. Uh, and this one, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get you in there as well, but right there. Here's another cable for the, the drive. But there's the two tabs I'm talking about, one on either side, like little wings. You have to push those together, all right, so it fits through this the slot in this uh, bracket. Same sort of thing over here. You're going to have to get in there with some needle nose pliers and push the two tabs together to slide that through. Um, and then we're going to have to disconnect it from this end of the of the uh, arm as well. So that's where we're going with it next. There we go. That's it. And then to get it to get it off of the uh, Z bend thing right here, you can see it's a there's a Z on the end of it. You just kind of have to line it up with that sort of slot there that's an oblong slot and you just kind of line it up and then sort of twist it to get it out all right so i got it flipped up and i pulled the uh, little uh, retaining clip from the deck here and the last thing you gotta do is try to pull it through all right, so now we're gonna see if this thing is seized. So you should be able to easily move this cable within this sheath back and forth. And as you can see, I'm pulling it as much as I can and it's not working. So we're gonna need a cable replacement on uh, this self-propel. You can kind of even hear some crackling with all the rust and stuff inside this so we'll get a new cable for this thing sometimes the cables actually have the part number actually right on the cable which is nice for us to try and find a replacement 194653 it looks like so i'm going to look that cable up uh well first of all see if i have one in my parts and uh, place that cable and see if that fixes our problem so a little trick if you got a bench vise uh, and you've got one of these cables that are kind of all crusty and um, you know a little bit rusted on the inside what you can do is put one end in your bench vise okay and then you can try and put the other end you can pull the other end of the sheathing, right? So that you can pull the sheathing through or over that and maybe loosen up some of that rust. So I've done that. And now if I grab the other end and I hold the cable part and just pull the sheathing, you can see that I've loosened the sheathing. Now, I can still hear kind of some rust and stuff in there. And, um, you know, what I'm gonna end up doing here now is try and get some lubrication down inside this sheathing. So just take whatever you got, WD-40, PB Blaster, whatever you have, and make sure you have your glasses on. And then what I do is I take my, my shop towel and then I try and stick this hose to try and shoot as much of this PB blaster down and in the, in that sheathing. Now, a lot of it you're not gonna get in there, but you're gonna get some in there. So you just keep doing that. Some guys use like white lithium grease, but this is sort of a slow, tedious process. If you want, just replace the cable. 
I think they're probably $15, $20. But you tr try and, I like to try and rub the cable a little bit. All right? And you keep trying to get as much down in there as you can. They do make a little bit of a tool for this thing too. I've not gotten one yet, but. I find this works okay. I've had some success with it, but sometimes you just, inevitably you gotta change the cable. So once you get some down and in there, you kind of work that, that sheathing back and forth by Again, holding the cable on this end. All right, and then what you can do is release this end, put the other end in here, and do the same thing, trying to get as much lubrication down and in that sheathing as you possibly can. So don't just keep spraying it. You kind of have to like shoot it a little bit at a time because if you just keep spraying it, you'll just, you'll get it all over the place. Not that I'm not already getting it all over the place, but this end's not as bad. It's the bottom end that seems a little crustier. So again, just work your sheathing back and forth. And uh, this looks like this cable is going to be usable again. All right, so I'm going to put it back on the machine and uh, then we're going to test it out. So I got it reinstalled. I just kind of got you zoomed in here right on this particular area. I want you to focus on this little arm here. This should move like this when I pull that cable or I pull the handle up top. Boom works just like it's supposed to. Now what I'll do is I'll just take off this nut. All right, and this top part of the pulley. Now I'm going to engage and sort of clamp off this handle up top. All right, that's gonna minimize the space here. Actually, that doesn't really do much, but what you need to do is kind of push down on this guy. All right, put your top piece back on. Back together now. All right, so that's good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is put it back down. And before I put this cover back on, I'm going to go ahead and test this out. All right, so I do expect a little bit of uh, smoking coming out of this thing. When it fires up, it's because I tipped it over. I did tip it over the right way, like carburetor side up, but uh, I did spin the blade, which uh, kind of moved the piston up and down a little bit and allowed a little bit of oil to kind of seep out. So anyways, see what happens.
once again, getting some of that backfire and all that stuff because it's all in the exhaust, right? So as soon as that heats up, it's gonna, gonna backfire on it a little bit. So. All right, so there you have it. Uh, this one ended up being a cable and uh, I was able to just kind of lubricate it back up and then reinstall it and uh, now she's all working. So uh, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you end up having to spend 20 bucks to replace a cable, but um, hopefully um, you got something out of this, the troubleshooting that I went through to try and sort this out. And uh, if it was informative and you liked it, please smash the like button and uh, you know what, if you like this kind of stuff, I post a video once a week on my channel and uh, it, uh, you know, I do a lot of uh, small engine repair work, uh, the springtime especially. So uh, if you're looking for a repair video, just go ahead and do a search on my uh, channel. You'll probably find something that you're looking for. So anyways guys, thanks again for watching and uh, consider subscribing and uh, until our next project, take care.